today I'm working on the G37. I am installing a throttle body spacer that I got from Spacer Dynamics. So I'm about to back up the car and get it out onto the driveway in the sunlight so I could do the install out there. Unboxing it right now. This is how it would come. It's open. Alright, rip this open. Comes with installation instructions. Comes with two spacers, eight longer bolts, and two o rings to install it. Got our two spacers right here. Each spacer comes with an O-ring, and the bolts are right here. Let's get this out. Four Allen head bolts. The spacer, the O-ring is pre-installed. This has a nice heat sink design, it's aluminum, and there's the cuts, it's a nice design. I'm not sure if this actually makes a difference or makes any power. Last time I've used a throttle body spacer was back on my first car, a 95 Eclipse, so. and it just made it intake sound a little cooler, but I'm not sure if it actually did anything. So. But I got it anyways, and then we'll try it out. Now the first thing I'm about to do is remove my intake to get the job started. My intake is aftermarket short ram. So I just gotta remove the filter right here, then remove the bolt holding it on under here. There's a 10 millimeter somewhere for this bracket. And then I also just gotta slip this hose off and loosen the one clamp right here and then my intake will come out and unplug the air sensor the master flow sensor is on the bottom side just removing my strut bar so i could uh Remove the top cover to make things easier for me. And the bar's out. The engine has five 10 millimeters that need to come out on the top cover. Just break those loose. Once you got all these out, the cover just lifts straight off. Now I have access to my 10 millimeter. And that's that. It is pretty much out. Slip it off the throttle body. And then get this hose off of there. And then just push this tab right here. Push down. And then wiggle it off. There you go. And I already recently cleaned my MAF sensor. So my MAF sensor was cleaned recently. But if you haven't cleaned yours, I'd get some MAF, MAF air flow sensor cleaner and spray it while you had it off. I've recently cleaned my throttle body, so my throttle body, I didn't unplug it. 
and I didn't remove the coolant lines to clean mine. I just pushed the flap open and cleaned it with a brush and clean it. And it still looks pretty clean. But either way, I need, I did take the four bolts off and that's all I did to clean mine. It's four or five millimeter hex Allen. So that's the size you'll be needing. Got an extension and my five millimeter hex. So I'm just gonna crack these loose. They break loose pretty easy. All of them are broken loose, so now I'm gonna unscrew the lower ones first because those are harder to access and get those out. Now that the two lower ones are out, I'm just gonna take out the top ones now. And with it off this far now, you don't need to unplug it. I just lift it up like this and I cleaned my plate and everything. And then I cleaned the inside a little bit. And mine's still looking pretty clean. It didn't get dirty back. And I cleaned it about six months ago, so. I'm not getting into cleaning it. I just use some carburetor cleaner and a brush. The brass brush and the nylon brush to clean it. You may need to do the throttle uh, relearning process after cleaning it. Make sure your seal here is clean because you want to make sure you have a good seal there. Just wiping the seal with a rag. Make sure it's nice and clean. So, it seals good with the inside a quick wipe. It's a little dirty, but not bad. And I'm probably doing an upper and lower ported, ported lower intake and upper eventually. So, those are future mods. A little bit of grease on the O-ring. This is rubber safe grease. Kind of like silicone grease. So it's a little bit of this on our seal. Make sure it seals properly. I'm gonna wipe down the flange of the throttle body itself. Make sure that's clean. Put some grease onto my new seal for this O-ring. And then insert it into the groove that it goes in. Make sure it's pressed in there properly so it doesn't come out on you. Once we have it seated in there properly, now I'm going to install it with the heat sink parts facing towards the top and out so they're visible. You're just going to need your new longer bolts that are included. These do not come with a lock washer like the original has a lock washer on it. So I'm gonna add a little blue thread locker to the threads because there's no lock washer. I'm gonna do that for my four new bolts. Just put a little on each one. Grab my new spacer, put the O-ring against the thread body with the heat sinks facing up and out and then insert my bolt. Now I'm gonna insert my bolt through the front and pass it straight through. And then try to catch them now, get them. I got that one caught a little. I'm gonna catch another one, send it through. That one's cut. Final two. Got all the bolts are cut. I'm just gonna start tightening them down. 
and then I'll torque them. These bolts here tighten to 86 inch pounds. And so do not over torque these because this is 86 inch pounds, not foot pounds, inch pounds. You do not need a torque wrench. You can just tighten it by feel. But if you are using a torque wrench, it's 86 inch pounds. Everything should tighten smoothly. If it's not, then you probably have it cross-threaded. So make sure everything goes in smoothly. Torque these crisscross back and forth. So I'm gonna torque this one first. And that's 86. I'm gonna go to the bottom corner one. All right, it's reset. I'm gonna torque this top corner now. And that's good. And that's good, that's 84. That's fully installed. Now it's time to just reinstall back my intake and this side is all done. Put this on there now. This on. Gotta get clearance from my Fujita filter now. It is a tight squeeze. So it has extended it out. Okay. I bent that mounting bracket a little bit there. And we'll try to get my 10 millimeter installed. And that's caught on. I can tighten that yet. I want to make sure everything fits properly first. We uh, adjusted the clamps, now I'm just going to tighten them up. Tighten the one on the throttle body first. And tighten the one right here on the coupler. Go into the pipe. Close it tight. Now this can swivel. Get that hose back on there. Reinstall. Get this clamp back on. I'll leave it down like that so it's easy to get off. And what else? The filter has good clamps. I need to tighten up. It's 10 millimeter. I didn't tighten it, I just put it on. That's tight. Plugging back my map sensor before I forget about it. Alright, that's plugged in. The last thing to do is to tighten up my hose clamp for my filter. And all that is good. Intakes installed, spacers installed, everything's torqued, and it's ready to go. Now to do the other side. That's how it looks all put back together. Both sides are completely done. Next job, the next thing to do is to put my engine cover back on. And the only mods I had to do was since I put an oversized filter for my intakes, it was kind of tight, so I had to angle them slightly so they could clear this hose and the brackets. Right here, I just had to bend it more that way because with the space here, it pushes everything towards the front of the car a little. It makes the intake a little longer. So I've got my cover here. It just goes right back up top here. It touches a little right here, so you could cut this off right here if you don't want any rubbing. But I'm just going to leave it as is. I'm not going to mess with it. 
and the cover's back on. That's all done, so I'm gonna give it a startup and make sure it runs. take it for a quick test drive to see how it performs now. It claims to give increased gas mileage and horsepower and torque. notice a difference in sound there probably is a small difference in sound it might make a little bit of a whistle or something but my intake was already loud to begin with if it did make any horsepower difference or anything it's probably just a small amount that you wouldn't even notice it's idling here no check engine lights and everything is still in place it gave a little bit more throttle response but other than that, I'm not really sure. But it definitely feels like there's more throttle response, but I'm not 100% sure on that. It's just what I feel. Because when I was hitting the turns, I was pulling through the turns with a lot more power than before. So it may have just given better throttle response as far as I can tell right now. <laughs> 